It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, hey, somebody reached out and they said, Ray, you're going to have to talk about this Xerox HP thing. And, you know, I didn't really want to talk about Xerox HP and, and tell the story until after this pandemic thing, but we got to run business. I mean, we all have to have to work through this, this terrible time that we're in. And I do need to address it because I've been awful bullish on Xerox buying HP. I started talking about HP and Xerox coming together as early as 2017. I was way out in front on this. You know, I've written, you know, tons of articles about it, did a lot of videos about it. So I want to share my thoughts on why Xerox pulled out of the deal. And folks, before I do that, I got to tell you a little story. So picture a buyer and a seller standing there next to each other, and they're going to negotiate on a product. <laughs> and the buyer, the buyer says to the seller, I'll give you $20 for that. And the seller says, no, 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 I've got to get $25. I've got to get $25. And he goes into a bunch of reasons why he should get $25. And the buyer says, okay, I'll give you $17. And, and, and the seller says, oh, no, 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 no. You know, I mean, you just offered me $20. And, you know, I really got to get 20. I got to get 25. Will you take 22? Will you, will you, will you give me $22? <laughs> and then the buyer says, all right, I'll give you $8. Folks, that's the reality of it. Before, before John Vicentine, Xerox, and their board can make another offer to HP, they got to pull this offer off the table. Now, nobody could have predicted this pandemic. Well, I guess some scientists predicted it, but other than that, nobody, nobody really predicted the pandemic and nobody was really running a business around a pandemic. Of course, in the future, they will. They will in the future. So there's a lot of things that have happened through this you know, saga of Xerox and HP. And one of the things that has happened recently is that the shareholders, well, the shareholders of, of HP decided they're going to sue the board at HP because they want to find out about, well, let me pull that up here. I got the wrong thing. They want to find out about that analysis from Goldman, you know, and why HP decided not to go ahead and do this deal. They want that analysis. They want to read about it. And I'm going to suggest to those shareholders that they just go to my website because a while back I put all this stuff together. I put all the videos I've done. I put all the articles that I've written. And if you go to my website, endofthedaywithray.com, go to my library, pull up the section that says Ray's thoughts on you know, Xerox HP. They're all there. All kinds of stuff might help you. Might help you ask, ask the board more questions through that lawsuit. And then the other thing I hear a lot is, well, Ray, you know, if, if, if Xerox would have paid $30 billion for HP and now we're in this pandemic, it would be disastrous. Well, again, if you go and read my articles, I talk about a third party coming in there. I've talked about Canon. I've talked about Fuji. There was a lot of ways they could have skinned that cat. And quite frankly, those two companies together would have been in a much better position coming out of this. Absolutely would have been in a much better position coming out of this. And you know, my friends over there at HP, especially the shareholders, if you hear your leadership continue talking about how they're going to disrupt A3 with Samsung A3, and they're going to come in there and sell a whole bunch of A3 copy machines, you know, the really big ones that I did a video on, those really big copy machines? Well, guess what? Customers aren't going to buy those anymore. After this evolutionary event, customers aren't going to buy the big machines. They're going to buy the small machines. So here's what I suggest you do over there at Xerox. I know you guys are smart guys, not going to take any advice from Ray, but here's what I would do. I would immediately stop buying HP OEM toner. They didn't need you before the pandemic. They don't need you during the pandemic. They don't think they need you at all. So stop giving them your money. Stop buying any OEM HP toner. Call my friends at Clover and buy their toner and put their toner into millions of HPs that you service and support under managed print services. The other thing, stop buying the Samsung copy machines. Call my friends over at Lexmark. They'd be more than happy to sell you theirs. And when this is all over, you could be like that buyer and seller that I started with. You can go to HP and say, okay, we were going to give you $20. Now we're going to give you $15. My friends, these are tough times that we're in, but we have to start thinking about the future. There will be massive consolidation. Xerox was first in the thinking of this. And of course, they weren't basing on a pandemic. But I assure you, when we come out of this, Everything we do is going to be based on this ever happening again. We will be prepared. At least the smart people will. So I'm going to end this like I always do. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all later.